Hey guys, Bowler here with a character creation guide for Frey Tools. I've only made one character before this, so I'm no expert, but I did want to share everything that I know about the process, and hopefully these basics will help you guys get into Frey Tooling. Making characters is a lot easier than you'd think, but the initial start can be a little bit confusing, so hopefully you can follow this guide and kind of learn the process. So the first thing you want to do is actually install Frey Tools. You can use the guide right here I have in the description to set it up and get the plugins and whatnot because that's what the first thing you need to do. Because before you can watch this video, you're going to need three things. You're going to have to have Frey Tools installed, you're going to have to have the character template set up, and you're going to have to have the plugins from the setup guide. And of course, a link to the setup guide is also in the description. So assuming you have those three things checked off, here is the table of contents for what I'll be covering today. So not the whole process of making an entire character, but rather me showing you what the process is like for these specific things. So let's start with the setup of the file. All right, so once you've opened up Frey Tools, you'll want to come to the top left here where it says File, and then go to New Project from Template. Then you'll want to make a new folder in your documents or wherever you want to make your character. I'm naming mine Master Hand because my character I'm going to be doing for this video is Master Hand. And then we'll want to also make the file name the same character name. Now, first things first, I recommend checking your entities. Go to Character Entity, then go to Animations, and make sure all of your animations for Frankie are actually here. And if Frankie's animations are looking good, then we are ready to move on to the most important part of the file setup. So come down here to the bottom left, click on Manifest JSON, and then you're going to change this resource ID to the name of your character. Mine is Master Hand. You also want to change the ID right here to also be Master Hand, the character name to whatever your character's name is, which again for me is Master Hand, and then it's completely optional, but you can also change the game and description on the CSS, which you'll see in this little info box in the character select screen. Once you've done that, there are two more things you must do, which is go to Character Entity again, Properties, click the little box right here, and then change ID to Master Hand. Make sure it's the exact spelling as you have right here in Resource ID, very important. And one last thing, you wanna to go to your scripts over here, Character, Character Stats, and then change Character Template also to Master Hand. All right, now that you have that done, you are ready to export and do your first test run of your character, which it's just Frankie renamed, but we must make sure that this actually works before we move on. So to do that, we need to export our file. But before we do that, we need a location to export it to. So you'll want to go to your Steam, right click on Frame Makers, go to Properties, Local Files, and then Browse. When you click on Browse, it should open up this Frame Makers file, which should have assets and replays. And if you don't have a custom folder already, you'll want to add one. So make a new folder and name it custom. In the custom folder, you should make a new folder, name it your character. So for mine, it's master hand. Now, once you're in the folder, you want to come up here to the top and actually copy the location of this folder, which we'll use in Frey Tools. Now with the location copied, go to Frey Tools, publish project, add a folder, and then press browse, paste in the location of your folder, now when you press publish all here in the bottom, it'll automatically put the file where it needs to be, so you won't have to keep copy pasting it to the right location. Now press publish all, and we should be good to test it. To make sure your file is actually being read properly, go to the custom tab, local content, and then press reload custom content. Once you've done that, on the left you should see your character here, which is just a reskin Frankie with a new name. As you can see, my character does work, and in the bottom you can see it says master hand, but all the animations and attacks are obviously still Frankies. So with the export actually working, we can begin making the actual character. Next, you'll want to import your sprites. How you get your sprites is up to you, whether you make them yourself or make a sprite rip. For me, I found these on Mugen and got permission from the creator. So what you want to do is take all these sprites and then go back to your master hand folder for me using my documents, go to library, sprites, make a new folder, which we will call master hand sprites. And then in there, I pasted all of my sprites. Now when I go to Frey Tools and I press the refresh button up here, go to sprites down here, I'll see my master hand sprites, which is where we can begin doing a very basic introduction to making animations. All right, so for the first animation, I'm gonna be making master hands idle. Master hands idle has eight different frames, so I wanna make eight different keyframes on the timeline. For master hand, I'm making about five frames for each, but it could be different for yours. So once I have the different keyframes, we wanna start adding in the sprites. So for the first one, we come here to 0, 0, add in the sprite, then for the next one, 0, 1, 0, 2, etc. The first thing you'll notice is that the sprites aren't automatically lined up, so we need to reposition them so they are. The easy way to do that is to come to the properties by clicking on the sprite, 
Go to Position, and then type in the same position for all of them. So now we sort of actually have an idle animation. That being said, the frame rate on Fray Tools is not very accurate to the actual 60 FPS of in-game, so it's not the best way to judge it. Let's put it in the game and actually see how it looks. So as you can see, we actually do have an idle animation. It's a little bit fast, so I'll definitely tweak it, but it's nice to see that it actually worked. So I went ahead and tweaked the animation some, but I also want to add a hurt box. So for an animation, if you want to add a hurt box, the easiest way to do it is come here to insert layer on the timeline, and then you want to add collision box. From collision box, you can come here to collision box type, and you click on the layer here, and then go to hurt box. This will make a hurt box by default, and then you can size it down to whatever you want. It's important to know if you rotate a hurt box, rotated hurt boxes and hit boxes don't currently work, so it'll automatically realign to being not rotated. So I Highly, highly recommend do not rotate your hurt boxes and hitboxes, as of right now at least. Making good hurt boxes takes a lot of time, so I recommend not really doing it until you're very comfortable with what your animation is and you're happy with it. Now these hurt boxes here aren't the most accurate, but they'll do pretty good for right now. So I want to go ahead and republish my character and make sure it actually works good. And with the hurt box, we finally have our first animation done. Next we can go ahead and add our walk animation, our run animation, and things such as that. The last piece of advice I'll give for doing the basic animations is always check the frame scripts for each animation because the developers left a lot of notes for what the animations are and how to do them well. So I'll always be checking for these little messages. So using the knowledge of how to make an idle animation, you should be okay with most of the basic animations. So let's move on to a basic attack. Alright, anyways, let's talk about attacks. So we're going to come here to jab 1, we're going to delete the image layers and just start with our own frames, so you can delete this image layer at our own. However long you make the animation is however long the frame data for the move is. For a jab, about maybe 15 frames I think is fair. So I'm making about a 15 frame move. Most characters will have multiple sprites for their jabs, but <laughs> Master Hand's jab is very simple. I just want to do a, an attack that moves forward. The character template already has hitboxes that you can tweak and mess around with, but again, if you ever want to make your own hitbox or have multiple hitboxes, you can go to Insert Layer, Add a Collision Box, and then turn that Collision Box into a hitbox. And it's also worth noting, the hitbox number here is important. That's how it gets the stats from your scripts and then character hitbox stats. It will determine it by the name, which is hitbox 0 by default, and then hitbox 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is also how the priority is determined. So if you ever want a sweet spot or a sour spot, the priority on what moves uh, or what hitboxes will take priority is based on the number. Now for the jab, I want it to be a 3-hit combo, which means in the frame script we have to add this code here, which means if you press attack, it will play this function, which is self.playAnimationJab2, which will transition from Jab1 to Jab2 after this frame script if you press attack. I also want his jab to move forward, so in a frame script which basically plays the code that's on that frame. On the second frame, I'm going to be adding code that says self.setXP10, and then I'm going to add a couple keyframes here that slow down the speed, so it's a little bit of a burst of initial speed, and then this code is just setting the, uh, the self x speed to itself, but a smaller amount. So it keeps reducing itself, and then eventually will reach zero again. I also went ahead and added a walk animation so we can kind of move around with him, and this is what his jab looks like with the new animation and hitbox and hurtbox. So as you can see, it does move him forward, but stops him, which is about what I wanted. I could increase this amount or decrease it by the amount of speed, and also the rate that the speed decreases. So before we add jab 2 and 3, let's mess with the hitbox stats to show you how to change hitboxes on moves. So if I want to change the stats for this hitbox on this jab, we can change the damage amount to anything, so this one will do 4 damage. From here we can change the angle of the move, which will change to 45, the base knockback, which is the amount of knockback that it will always do no matter what, the knockback growth, which is the amount of knockback we will add depending on the percentage of the opponent, so the higher the knockback growth, the more knockback it will do at higher percents, which I don't really quite want for a jab, so a jab having a low knockback growth is fine, but I do think I want even a higher base knockback. Now you may be wondering why the hit stop and self hit stop are negative 1. These are things you can find from the FrameMaker's API, which will explain that basically it's dynamic in the fact that it will change based on the knockback growth and how much knockback they're actually taking. Um, but you can also change it to a specific number to be how many frames of hit, hit stop you want, and how many frames of self hit stop you want. Which, by the way, hit stop is basically how much your character freezes when they hit somebody. Think about like a falcon knee when you hit somebody, you freeze for a second. So let's check out the updated jab. As you can see, that feels a lot better for this jab. So let's go ahead and add a jab 2 and 3 and show you what a full combo can look like. Now for jab 2, I'm going to introduce a mechanic called tweening, which basically means if I want a sprite to move between frames naturally, I can add a keyframe here of the same sprite, I can then move the sprite downward, and then I can come here, go to tween, 
as you can see, an in-between frames, all this movement. So as you can see with tweening, I have an animation where the fist comes down and then slowly comes back up. And I want it to come back up so that way naturally, if you don't cancel the attack, it will sort of go back to the idle animation. Now we can go ahead and add the hitbox to the move. For this hitbox, I wanted to actually do a spike, which means yes, you could probably do a jab spike if you do it near the ledge. And then for jab three, I just want to make a stronger finisher. So I gave it a higher base knockback than the other moves with even a little bit more of knockback growth as well. So maybe it could kill at eventually like a very high percent. All right, so let's see what the jab combo looks like in game. And as you can see, it's actually pretty good. I think it's a very satisfying and overall, it's about what I'd look for for a jab combo. So that about covers it for attacks. Now I know I only did one attack, but you can kind of use what you've learned from doing a jab to do aerials, smash attacks, and things like that. It's pretty straightforward. Now if you have any questions about certain types of attacks, like if you want to make a wind box or super armor, a lot of that information can be found on the API document, but you can also find out some of that information from the Discord. The Discord is very useful and very supportive, so if you ever need help, definitely come there for more advice. Okay, so projectiles are pretty simple. They're a lot like attacks, but basically you're just making a new entity with the hitbox separate from your own character. And to do that, there's already sections in the template for it. You can see there's already the same scripts but for just projectiles instead of character. So you can change like the projectile hitbox stats. You can make it sort of reflectable or absorbable by doing reflectable true or absorbable true if you want that for your projectile. And you can overall change the uh, stats for your projectile. So if you want gravity or no gravity, uh, you can come here and change that. And for mine, I want no gravity, so we'll change it to zero. You can also come to the script and change the speed of your projectile. So if you do want it to have gravity, or how fast you want it to go like horizontally, you can change the speed on it. And then once we have that, we can simply go back to the entities and go to projectile, which will have animations for the projectile, which are separate from our default Frankie animations. And as you can see, after a simple animation swap, uh, we can go in game and we do in fact have an updated projectile, which now is affected by no gravity and just goes straight horizontally. Although it is missing a hitbox, so we can go back to our freight tools here and add a hitbox and a hurtbox here so it'll actually function like a working projectile. And as you can see in game, it looks great. Making projectiles is very simple and easy to make. So all we need to do now is actually add the animation to the neutral special, which is what the move this is. So in our character entities, we can see neutral special has a frame script, which basically calls a function to create this projectile. And you can move that frame script anywhere into the move to actually spawn the projectile. Or if you want to spawn multiple, you can just keep this uh, same function multiple times in your script. So I went ahead and did the same thing we did for other animations to make our neutral special animation. And here's what it looks like in game. And yeah, it looks pretty good. You can even go ahead and add cooldowns to projectiles or a lifespan if you want the projectile to delete itself after a certain amount of time. And you can do all that inside of the projectile script. But there's one thing I feel like is missing, which is audio. So I'm going to show you really quickly how we can add some sound effects. All you need to do is add your audio file to your uh, folder where you had your sprites. There's a folder called audio, and it'll appear right here inside your freight tools. Very simple. Then from here, you want to actually make sure you add an ID to your audio clip so it's easier to reference. If you don't do this, this won't work. And then simply in your animation, just add this code right here, but you can swap out the name to whatever the ID for your audio clip is and it'll play that clip. And as you can see, it does work. Now I didn't actually spend the time to sync it up and make it actually, you know, kind of smooth, but it's just a proof of concept that yeah, you can add sound effects to your moves. So yeah, that's a basic projectile and how you do it. And the last section in entities which we'll be covering is menus and some extra character related things. In here, we can change things such as the in-game HUD and character select screen pictures. So to do it, you just simply do a basic image swap to whatever your character is. I recommend making the uh, image size about the same so it looks good on the CSS and in-game. Specifically in Frame Makers, the HUD actually comes with multiple different emotions. So Frankie will get angry when you summon an assist, or he'll be happy when you get a kill, and this can be done for all the characters in the game. So if you want to go ahead and do the extra step, you can give your character special different like HUD pictures for different actions. So yeah, that is how you do the CSS. I didn't spend too much time with it, but it looks good enough, I think. And the last thing I want to talk about before we move on to costumes is character stats. If you actually want to change anything about your character to make him feel less like Frankie and more like your own unique character, definitely go into the character stats, change your gravity, change your jump height, your speed, uh, how fast your roll is, stuff like that, how far your moves go. That way you actually make sure your character doesn't feel too generic. We don't want like a hundred different Frankie clones that are just reskinned on the workshop. All right, so now we've done that, let's move on to costumes. Costumes are really easy in Frame Makers as long as your character is you know, kind of designed with costumes in mind. Basically, you want to come down to this palette section down here 
and then either you can drag in one of your sprites from your sprites folder or make a sprite sheet with multiple sprites on one image drag it over here and then boom you have your sprites in the palette section ready to make costumes for it you can come up here to the plus to add more palettes if you want to add more or less and then all you need to do really is just over here on the right side use the eyedropper tool pick a color and then change that color to something else if done correctly then every time that color appears inside the animations it'll change and update to the new color so you can see i can easily make a green master hand or a blue or red or whatever color i wanted to make him uh, i went ahead and made four example ones to show you kind of how easy it is it didn't take me very long i didn't spend too much time on it but yeah costumes really aren't too difficult as long as your character doesn't have like a million different colors then it would be kind of difficult to do actually. All right, so I would say the basics have been covered, which means we can now talk about uploading your content. So if you have your character done, you can come to the local custom content section on the Frame Makers menu and click on your character to upload it to the workshop. Now, there are a few things you want to do before actually uploading it. First off, go back to the folder that your .fray file is in. One of the first things you want to do is go to the meta file inside of your uh, local files. And then from here, you can add the title and description to your workshop upload as well as the version number, which is very important for when you're doing multiple updates to your character. Always make sure to change the version number in here, not inside Frame Makers. After that, you need to add a thumbnail, and to do a thumbnail, all you need to do is add a PNG or just an image called Thumb, and then also I recommend making it a square, like perfect square size, because all of the current workshop uh, uploads for the Frame Makers workshop are in perfect square proportions, so you want to do a perfect square for yours. And then once you have your thumbnail and you've added the title and description to your meta file, uh, you sh should be good to upload. You just want to come back to your in-game, press upload, and then boom, you're good to go. Uh, and yeah, with that, you are basically done. Congratulations, you have your first character in Frame Makers. It definitely will take you a lot of time starting out, but the more you do it and the better you get, you'll be able to do it quicker and hopefully better. Of course, if you have any questions, I highly recommend either checking out the API slash written guides, or if that doesn't work, you can go to some discords that allow Freight Tools related questions. Don't be too bothersome or like annoy too many people, but if you definitely have some questions, don't be afraid to ask for help because they're a very supportive community. Also, if you want to check out the Freight Tools file for yourself, I did upload a zip of it in the description below. So if you're having any issues with your Freight Tools file and want to see what I did for mine, then you can check it out there as well. But yeah, thanks for watching and happy Freight Tooling!